Okay. We've got a projectile motion question here where it says, Emmanuel Zacchini was a famous American human cannonball. In 1940, he attempted to clear a Ferris wheel, which is this, that is 18 metres high after being launched from a cannon at an elevation of 53 degrees. So from here is going to be 53 degrees and a muscle velocity of 26.5 metres a second. So that's going to be how fast he flies. If his point of projection from the cannon was three metres above the ground, which, because he runs a pretty sketchy circus... We've demonstrated that with this chest of drawers, which is three metres above the ground. Does he clear the Ferris wheel? So does he fly nicely over the Ferris wheel and come to a sort of a halt back down here? So what do we have to do? Well, first of all, we have to break this with any projectile motion. You have to break his launch velocity into its horizontal uh, horizontal and vertical components. So we'll draw a relatively quick vector, like a triangle here. We've got a right angle here. This angle here is 53 degrees. And this side here is represented by the launch muzzle velocity of 26.5 meters per second, negative one. So to start with, we have to figure out if he's going to clear the Ferris wheel. Now, basically, to clear the Ferris wheel, we just have to make sure his maximum height has got to be greater than 18 metres, which is how high the Ferris wheel is. So we're going to be dealing to start with with his vertical velocity. So we'll call this ve ve velocity in the vertical direction. And we can calculate this because we've got the hypotenuse of this triangle as well as an angle. We've got need the opposite side, so we can use sine. So this is just going to be equal to 26.5 sine of 53. Now, if you don't know why I did that, you probably want to look at a different video and probably like figure out how to do maths. But if we from to this side, we can use trigonometry to work out that it is 21. Point my calculator says it's 21.164 meters per second to the negative one. Okay, so now what we then have to do is we have to basically just figure out how high is going to go in the air. So we have a formula which takes into, consa takes into consideration his final velocity, his initial velocity, and the acceleration and the distance. And the, that formula looks like this, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And we can just plug in the values we know. We know at its maximum height, hopefully it's going to be over the Ferris wheel, velocity in the vertical direction is going to be equal to 0. So we know his final velocity is 0. And that's going to be equal to... 21.164, what we just figured out, squared plus 2 times negative 9.8. Now, it's important that we write negative 9.81. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And it's working in the opposite direction to his initial velocity. So because these are vector quantities, not scalar, we have to give it a direction, which was why we assign it the negative value times the distance, which we're denoting s. So... What we can do then is we can rearrange this. So S is going to be equal to 21.164 squared divided by 2 times 9.81. And that equals 22.829 metres. Now you'll say, Harold, but just wait, he's already three metres off the ground. You are correct. So what we have to do is his maximum height... ...is going to be the number we've just got... And we've got this to the nearest millimetre. Why we're so accurate, I don't know. Plus the three that he started with. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 25.82 
nine meters in the air. So the answer is for A. Yes, he is safe. Happy face. Okie dokie. So, looking at B. How far away from the cannon should the net have been placed? Well, let's just get some colour. To work this out, to start with, we're going to need to know the horizontal velocity because we're dealing with the horizontal component. Now, the horizontal component of this will be found by going our muzzle velocity, 26.5 times, because this is the adjacent side to the angle, the cosine of 53 degrees. Sorry if I'm using a different colour so you can sort of differentiate between the two. It's not that, you know, difficult to see, I hope. So once we've done that, what we can see is his horizontal velocity is 15.95 meters per second. And that'll help us later on. So to start with, what we have to do is we have to figure out how long he's going to be in the air for because his why are people messaging me while I'm trying to make a video because although his vertical velocity changes it goes from the fastest he's ever going to be out of the muzzle to slowing to zero at the maximum height and then he accelerates towards the ground the horizontal component because we're assuming that there's no air resistance stays constant the whole way through so if we figure out how long the guy is in the air for we know he's going at 15.95 meters per second in this direction. So we'll know how far that guy's gone and we'll know where to put the net. Hopefully for him, somewhere there. So what we do is we're gonna, because he's starting from three meters above the ground, we've got to break this into com two components. The time that it takes him to go from here to his maximum height, we'll call that time one. And the time that it takes him from going from where he's at the maximum height, hopefully over the Ferris wheel, to where he meets Mother Earth back down here. And we'll call that time two. So time two is going to be slightly bigger than time one because he's got three meters more to travel. All right, so we're looking for time one to start with. The way we're going to find that is by using, we'll start B down here, by using the formula V equals u plus a t. So we know when we get to our maximum height that our velocity, our final velocity is going to be zero. We know that our initial vertical velocity is 21.164. And we know our acceleration is negative 9.81. And with this is time one. So time one, mm -mm. shut up, is equal to, take that over our side, divide by that, 21.164 divided by 9.81. And once we do that calculation, we get 2.16. So time one, that's how long it takes him to go from the cannon to the top of the para parabolic, the parabola, that is his motion. So then we have to figure out, calculate time two. Well, to start with, we know that the guy goes 25.829 meters in the air. So what we can do is we can use, to find time two, we can use the formula S equals UT plus one half AT squared to calculate our T. So what we'll start with is we'll plug in the values we know. We know the distance he has to cover is this one. So 25.829. Eight two nine, 
is going to have to be equal to the initial velocity, well, the velocity at the top, where he's starting from in this case, is 0 times time, plus 1 half, then we've got 9.81 time squared. So in this one, we'll rearrange this. The, that time there will go to 0. We'll just bring that over the other side by dividing, and we'll get t2 is going to be equal to the square root of 25.829 divided by one half nine point eight one and then we put the top of the square root just to make it look good and that my friends equals two point two nine five seconds now just side note if you're in your final years of high school and you can't do those simple algebra rearrangements like that if you have to do if you need to be doing a different subject because so if, if you can't do that 12 year old algebra then physics is not for you try do drama or something because you're obviously not going to do this very well so getting back to this we've got our t1 the time that takes them to get to the top we've got a t2 the time that takes them to get to the bottom so we add them together so we can have our t total. And that's going to be equal to 4.452 seconds. Now, once we've got that, all it's pretty simple. What we have to do is we take advantage of the formula S. Distance is equal to velocity times the time. And that equals full, oh, the velocity, we'll do the velocity first, just to keep everyone happy. Get rid of that. The velocity we're going in the horizontal direction is 15.95 times the time, 4.452. And that equals, my friends, are basically smack bang on 71 meters. So, we have to position from launch position. So, there you go, is a pretty stock standard exam style, you know, parabolic motion question. Um, the things that you just have to remember is the velocity in the vertical changes, the velocity in the horizontal is always the same. And once you've got that, if you can do some trigonometry and some algebra, you're pretty much right. I hope that helped, and um, I'll see you next time.